Well, if you will, take your copy of God's Word, thank you, and turn with me to Romans chapter 3, excuse me, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 14, Romans chapter 10, we'll begin with verse 9 and read through verse 14. Once you find Romans 10, if you'll stand with me in reverence to the reading of God's Holy Infallible is inerrant, his preserved word. And verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him uh, in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord, and I pray, God, help us 
for these few minutes, Lord, as we try to proclaim thy word. God, we acknowledge that you are God Almighty. We acknowledge Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior of this world, his death, his burial, his resurrection upon the cross. And God, we acknowledge the Holy Spirit's operation this morning. We pray, God, by thy fullness, Lord, moving our hearts and our lives through the preaching, through the singing. And God, to cut to dividing asunder of soul and spirit with thy precious word. It's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As I come to you this morning, you may be seated. As I come to you this morning, I, of course, think about Thanksgiving. And there's a lot of things uh, that you and I both should be thankful for. First of all, I'm thankful for a, a good family. And I'm sure you are. I'm thankful for good children. I'm thankful for a job that pays my bills or partly pays them anyway half the time. Uh, I'm thankful for a car to get here this morning. I'm thankful for heat in this building right here that I don't have to sit in here and, and shudder and, uh, and uh, be cold this morning. Or I'm glad we don't have to chop wood out there and have to get Brother Gary to come and fill up the heater in the morning time to warm up the place like them old timers did. I'm thankful for many things this morning. I'm thankful for uh, a roof over my head and shoes on my feet. Uh, I'm thankful this morning for a lot of things, but the greatest and most important thing that I think we should remember to be thankful for is for salvation. I'm thankful for salvation this morning. As I look at Romans chapter 10, first thing I'm thankful for is I'm thankful for salvation. I think about John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does he say there? That we could be saved from our sins is basically the idea of John 3.16. So I'm thankful for salvation this morning because God has provided a way for me to be saved from my sins. And this morning he has provided a way for you to be saved from your sins. You see, we all come into this world with what we call a sin nature. Uh, we, uh, we have lied, we have cheated, we have stole, we have done much worse and maybe you've not done one of those, but uh, maybe you've done some of those things. Don't you understand that God's standard this morning is perfection? To get into God's heaven, you must be perfect. Is there anyone perfect here this morning? I would say no. Why? Because we have a sin nature. Uh, we've used this illustration many times uh, over the years, but think about a, a lion. A lion has what? A nature. He's a carnivore. I think I got it right. He's a meat eater. And if I were to take a salad and put it over here on this side in one of those chairs and I were to take a T-bone steak and put it on this side, where is he going to go? He's going to go to the T-bone steak every time. He's not going to naturally go to a piece of lettuce and eat on it regardless of how high grade a lettuce it is or maybe if, it, if it's non-organic uh, lettuce or organic lettuce. He's not going to it because it's his nature. For a lion to eat lettuce, it's going to have to be a nature change about him. And you and I were born with a sin nature. And this morning, we go to sin. Why? Because it's in our nature to do so. Why do we have to teach babies and children to sit good in church and to do right at school and to, uh, to do things the way they're supposed to? And they always do it the wrong way. Right, what, right, why? Right. Why? Why do we have to teach them good and they naturally do bad? It's in their nature, the sin nature is. And they must be saved from their sin nature and from the sinful things that they have done. I'm thankful for salvation. And as I think about being saved from sin, I think about that all people have always, God has always provided a means of salvation since the beginning of time. Some may be confused and say, well, Jesus didn't come until 2,000 years ago. What about those others that were 4,000 years ago? How were they saved? Well, they were saved the same way through the works of Jesus Christ. They were looking in faith to the cross. We look in faith uh, uh, back to the cross. They were looking forward. We were looking behind to the works of Jesus Christ on the cross. I think about Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21 when in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were the first human beings that were ever created. God created them in a perfect state. Uh, they didn't have sin a sin nature. They didn't have sin to their account. The Bible accounts in Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3, 1, 2, and 3, uh, that man walked with God, God in the garden. Uh, he had a, 
establish spiritual fellowship and walk with God. And God told him, he said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Have any tree that you want in the garden, but don't eat of this one because it is my commandment. If you do, you shall surely die. Well, we understand that what happened is that Satan came into the garden and he seduced Eve and Adam into thinking that it was better to eat of the knowledge of the tree of the good and evil uh, rather than to be faithful to God. So they yielded to the devil's word rather than to God's word and commandment. And what happened? Sin came into their lives. We find them shortly after that sin that God comes in the garden to speak with man as he always did. And they were hiding from God. Can I tell you that sin will always cause conflict between you and God? You want to know why a lot of people aren't in church this morning? It's because they've sinned desperately this week. And this morning they're scared to come and let God see them because they think they're hiding. But what we see is that they realized that they were naked. Man and woman, first of all, when they were first born, they were naked and they did not even realize it. Why? Because they had the knowledge of good, but they did not have the knowledge of evil. And when they partook and sinned against God now, they can't even look at each other properly. They're looking at each other with an evil intent and an evil eye because they're hiding in their nakedness from God. Sin always makes you look at yourself and everyone around you differently, doesn't it? And here they are in this mess. And you know what God should have done? God the Father should have looked at them and He should have cast them out of the garden and He should have let them die physically and He should have never created another man or a woman because they had sinned against Him and holy God. And He'd have been right to do so. But John 3.16 goes back to them too for God so loved the world. And God so loved mankind and He so loved Adam and Eve that He provided a way of salvation from their sins. They deserved death and it had been commanded by God. What did God say? If you take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, ye shall surely die physically and you shall surely die spiritually. And the commandment of God had been that you will die. But you know what? God even provided in the midst of His commandments. He said, I'm going to provide a way to disregard my commandment upon your sinfulness that you won't die because I love you. The penalty would still be paid, but mankind would not pay it. There in the garden as they were unclothed and they were in this uh, unrighteous state with God, God provided a way of salvation, a covering for their sin. What did He do? Genesis 3.21 tells us that He killed an animal. Uh, we don't know exactly. The Scriptures don't detail what that animal was. I personally believe it would have been a sheep, a lamb. Uh, because that would go in line with the rest of the Old Testament, the sacrificial system where, where uh, sheep were killed uh, uh, over and over again to symbolically give temporary covering for sin until Jesus would come and be the ultimate Lamb of God who would die on the cross. What do we see here? I'm thankful for salvation and I'm thankful that God provided salvation even for them because what did He do? He took the fur and the skin from that animal and He offered it to Adam and Eve. And what did they do? They received the covering of their, for their sins. And friend, I want to tell you that God loved them and provided a way of salvation. And today as the New Testament church, God has provided a way of salvation for our sins as well when the perfect Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, came into this wicked world. God took on flesh and He lived perfectly for us and He made a way of salvation for you and I. I'm thankful for salvation this morning. Secondly, I'm thankful that Jesus made salvation possible. I'm thankful that Jesus made salvation possible. Look at it in Romans 10 and verse 9. It says there, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you see the possibility that is made there for salvation? That God made salvation for you and me possible through the works of Jesus Christ and that is through if that we will accept Him by faith, God has made it possible for us to come out of sin 
and unto righteousness. Friend, I want you to understand that you do not deserve anything from God this morning, and I don't deserve anything from God, but it is because of God's love and God's reaching out and His mercy that He has offered wicked people, sinful people, nasty people, the opportunity to receive salvation from their sins this morning. God made it possible when we yield ourselves to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What did he say in verse 9? He said, if you will confess, but confess what? The works of Jesus Christ, the death on the cross, his burial, and three days later he was resurrected back to new life out of that tomb for your and my sins. Friend, we need to understand that there was some things that were imputed. There were some exchanges that came when Jesus came to the cross. He exchanged his righteousness to us for our unrighteousness. Don't you see that he was the perfect sinless lamb of God and he took that righteousness and he said, I've been perfect, but here you that would choose me that would take the possibility of salvation and activate it in your life by faith and confession of Jesus Christ, I'm giving you my perfection and I'm taking your imperfection. Aren't you glad that God met his own standard through the works of Jesus Christ on the cross? You could not have met his standard. I could not meet his standard. No one could meet his standard. So God came in human flesh and on the cross of Calvary, he met the standard on our behalf and those who would by faith believe in Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection and confess it with their mouth, they can be saved through the works of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thankful Jesus made salvation possible. But thirdly, I'm thankful that salvation is simple to receive. I'm thankful this morning that salvation is simple to receive. Look at verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Wow. Isn't that pretty simple? He says, if I believe in my heart what Jesus did and I'll confess it with my mouth, I'm saved. That's pretty simple, isn't it? That is so simple that we want to make it hard, don't we? You know, there's people that add to the works of God's salvation. There were Judaizers in the book of Galatians who said, okay, it's by faith, but also you've got to keep the law, you've got to be circumcised, you've got to eat the, the, to the law, according to the law, and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. All through the New Testament, there were people who were trying to add to the easy way of salvation. Friend, there are people today in all religions that are trying to add to the way of salvation. There are many that say that you can buy, you think that you can buy your way to heaven. In other words, you can tithe enough to get to heaven. That is a sad reality in some of the Catholic church, that they take penance and that if you pay a certain amount of money, someone uh, can be saved out of purgatory or hell and uh, then there are the, the, the Mormons who think that you can do certain works and that you can have someone who was, who was lost and went to hell, that you can be baptized for them and they be taken out of that, that place of purgatory. Friend, I'm going to tell you, there is no way other than Jesus Christ for the way of salvation. There are most of the world is trying to be good enough to earn salvation. They think that if you put a, a scale there and you put your good side, on, good deeds on one side and your bad things on one side, if the good outweighs the bad, that you can get to heaven. Friend, I just want you to understand this morning that there, salvation is by grace through faith and not of yourselves. It's, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, friend, this morning that the only way that you can be saved is to confess the works of Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe it in your heart. It is so simple, yet we have such a hard time receiving that, don't we? Boy, hadn't I got to do something else? Well, don't I need to clean myself up before I go to believe in Christ? Don't I need to drop my bad habits? Uh, I don't need to smoke, I don't need to drink, I don't need to chew, and I don't need to date girls that do. Well, it would sure be good not to do those things, but friend, I want you to understand that you can't clean yourself up because you by nature are a sinner and you will always turn back to your sins. And it is until Jesus Christ comes in and through His works, belief and confession of Him that the Holy Spirit comes in and regenerates you. 
reborns you again, if that's the correct literature, maybe not, not but anyway, to be reborn again, uh, to have your nature change from a lion to a lamb. God does an inner work in you and you receive salvation through his works and not of yourselves. There's so many that think that can be good enough, but they can't. They must lean on Jesus Christ. It's such a simple way. Repent of your sins and turn to Jesus Christ, believing in His death, His burial, and resurrection. How more simple can it be? I'm thankful that salvation is made simple. Because if I had to work for it, I'm kind of lazy on some days, I just admit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't work hard enough to get it. If I had to buy it, I sure don't have enough money to buy salvation. I can barely pay my bills now, right? I'm just thankful for the, the money I just got back from my South Carolina taxes, aren't you? Boy, that's sure going to help here at Christmas time. But that little check sure ain't going to help me buy salvation, is it? I'm glad that I don't have to be a certain status in life because if, the, if, if you had to be a, a higher status, I'd be out already because I was just born an old farm boy, old country boy, raised in a family that didn't have a whole, whole lot of money. We just uh, did what we could with what we had. But I'm thankful for what I got. I couldn't do it off of social status. I'm glad that Jesus Christ came and became everything that I wasn't so that I could have everything that he was. And that is the simple way of salvation, to confess with your mouth and to believe in thine heart. I'm thankful that salvation is simple to receive. Not only that, but I'm thankful that salvation is possible for anyone. I'm thankful that salvation is possible for anyone. You see it in verse 12 and verse 13. Verse 12 says, For there is no difference between Jew and, Gen and through G Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There are many people who make their ministries about saying that many people can't get saved and only a certain few can actually get saved. Friend, I want you to understand that this morning that anyone who would repent of their sins and by faith trust Christ in His works for salvation can be saved. I'm glad that it doesn't matter this morning whether you're what race you are, what ethnic group you are, no matter what nation you're from, no matter what language you speak, Recall across all social status borders in life and all divisions that can be made by mankind, there is not one person that couldn't hear the gospel and receive Christ if they would repent of their sins and by faith trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's saying there in verse 12, for there is no difference between Jew or the Greek. This would have been very strange to Jews in that day and time because they thought that they had the only way of salvation. There was great division between Jew and between Gentile. There were only really two groups of people and today there's only two classifications in God's mind of people. There's the Jew who are the descendants of Abraham and then there's all the rest of the world, the Gentiles, red, yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. And I'm glad today that as the Jew thought in the Old Testament that they were the only ones that had a right to God and everyone else were heathens, I'm glad today that what Paul was clearing up here is he said just because you Jews are spiritual and because God used you in the Old Testament to reveal himself to the world, you don't have a market on God. God is just as much the God of the Greek and to the Gentile as he is to the Jew. I'm thankful today that Salvation is possible for anyone. And if you're here today and maybe you don't know about religion, maybe you weren't raised in a Christian home, maybe you really don't know a lot of things, maybe you're not uh, high up on the social standards of the day, or maybe you're not really a good person, friend, I want you to understand today that God has made this simple way of salvation possible for anyone who would be real willing to repent of their sins and by faith trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. What does it say in verse 13? For whosoever, well, I don't think we need to do a deep Greek uh, study on this word right here to try to figure out or try to decide, the, the divide it to where it can't reach anyone and everyone. But whosoever, do you know what that means? That means whosoever. It means anyone that will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad that Romans 10, 13 says that any man that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is simple. And salvation is possible for anyone. But I'm also thankful that everyone can hear the gospel message. I'm thankful that everyone can hear the gospel message. What does it say in verse 14? How then 
shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. He gives us this great experience here in verses 9 through 13, this great knowledge that salvation is, is, uh, is possible and salvation is simple and salvation is uh, uh, open to all people. But then he goes on to say, but how th shall they receive this salvation? How then, verse 14, shall they uh, call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Friend, I'm glad this morning that God has made it possible for anyone and everyone to hear the gospel message. Why? Because he's given preachers. But when we look at that word preacher, it's not just talking about a man that stands behind a pulpit, but it's a word that means everyone, even Jelian, to evangelize, to speak forth the gospel. So there are many preachers in this world today. You and I both are preachers today if we have been born by the blood of Jesus Christ and been saved from our sins. We have the message of the gospel and we take the message into our workplace. We take the message into our families. We take the message into the world and community around us. We are carrying the gospel and I'm thankful this morning that everyone can hear the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that the gospel message has already gone around the world some would argue that point but in the book of Acts what we need to see and understand is the gospel did go out to the world as the Jews came for a normal feast on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and uh, when the New Testament church was ordained and orchestrated and put in action there were Jews from all over the world who had come to a feast and uh, Peter and the apostles began to preach and thousands were saved, and there were people of every nation, kindred, and tongue there. And when he preached the gospel, what happened? Everyone heard in him speak in their own language. It was a miracle of God that people from all over the world, from every group and division uh, and uh, language were there, and they received the gospel of Christ. And what happened is that they were put out into all of the world to go back to their hometowns and places to carry the gospel to every nation, kindred, and tongue. I'm thankful today that there are Christians in Haiti. There are Christians in Jamaica. There are Christians all over the known world. I'm thankful for missionaries today who are willing to to give up everything that they have to go into other lands to carry the gospel of Christ to people who need to hear the message of salvation. Why? Because how are they supposed to hear unless preachers and missionaries be sent and people go to them to give them the gospel? You might say, well, what about those people back in the far jungles of, of South America who they say have never been reached? Well, I don't know for sure if they've ever been reached or not. It could be, and I really believe that way past their forefathers at some point in time rejected the Word of God and therefore they missed the opportunity and the exceeding generations have failed because their forefathers failed. But let's just say that there are some out there who maybe have never heard the gospel of Christ and maybe you're worried about those this morning. Well, I just like the way that Adrian Rogers put it one time. He said, God is so uh, wanting to get the gospel to people who would receive him that if uh, uh, someone out there in the unknown jungle wanted to receive Christ or wanted to respond or see the light of the gospel, God would wreck a plane and parachute a missionary in to give them the gospel of Christ to them. I am thankful today that, the, that everyone can hear the gospel message. I'm thankful that there are uh, the Bible in most many languages today that Russians can read the true word of God that we here in America in the English language we have a Bible where we can read the word of God I'm glad that in all languages and uh, in every uh, distinct group can receive the word of God I'm thankful that everyone can hear the gospel message but most of all I'm thankful this morning that you and I have heard the gospel message this morning and the gospel message is this, it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, how many times you've done it, even who you did it with, and what degree of sin it was, light or small. It doesn't matter what group you come from, what family you came from. It doesn't matter if you were raised in church or not. But this morning the gospel goes out and God so loves you that just as he did for Adam and Eve, just as he did for all of the New Testament believers today, if you will repent of your sins 
by faith trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can be saved. What does that look like? Romans 10, 10, what is it saying? That if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, His death, burial, resurrection for the sins of men, you can be saved. Isn't that pretty simple? I'm thankful this morning for salvation and that you and I have an opportunity unto salvation. And I'm thankful that my lost family members who need to be saved, they have the possibility of salvation. But here's the thing. There will be a lot of people that will die and go to a devil's hell for all of eternity because they would not receive Jesus by the simple way that God the Father made it. And that's through Jesus Christ, His Son. This morning, there will be even those who will reject the message of Jesus Christ because maybe they've got busy in some other area of life and there's other things that are more important. But this morning, if you've never received Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, friend, can I tell you that if you'll receive Christ, He'll save you this morning. And He shall save you. And you don't have to worry about that anymore. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God will save you from your sins. Just as heaven is sure and salvation is sure, hell is sure and the devil is sure. And those who do not receive Jesus Christ will receive not eternal life, but receive eternal death. Friend, I don't know about you, but I'd say that's a bargain that God's given us. I'm thankful for salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning and we thank you, Lord, for salvation. We thank you that you've made it simple. We thank you, Lord, that you've made it possible. And God, this morning, we pray, Holy Ghost, to God, that you would do your drawing work and convicting work. And if there's any here lost and done and undone this morning, I pray, God, allow them, Lord, to call upon you. God, be with us all. Help us all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand and sing, will you be obedient this morning? This altar's open. If you need to do business with God, this